financial independence, country shopping, van nomadism, security culture, ethical enclaves, crypto anarchy, legal interstices, survivalism. Join your host Shane and Kyle as they explore this freedom strategy known as Vaughn. You're listening to the Vani Podcast. Some Thoughts on Libertarian Strategy, Part 3. What is freedom? A symptom, and perhaps one of the cause of psychoparalysis, is the vague and evasive meanings given to freedom. Some libertarians consider freedom to be loosely synonymous with opportunity, choice, or capability. This is popular among those who wish to pretend that they are maximizing freedom while they remain very much enslaved. Most residents of the Soviet Union are thus freer than a family pioneering on a remote island. Such a definition merely clouds. It is better to say opportunity when one means opportunity. Others equate freedom with social morality, the non-coercive behavior of others. They assert that freedom can only be bestowed by others, not achieved for oneself. That freedom cannot be achieved in defiance of threats, since the very act of defiance represents a departure from what one's behavior would otherwise be, and is thus unfree. This definition also serves as an alibi for servitude. What is a workable concept of freedom? I suggest. Freedom is invulnerability to coercion. Coercion being physical violence initiated by other volitional beings. This definition does not mention threat of coercion. Any psychopath can utter threats against the universe. Threats are taken seriously only when readily implementable, which comes back to vulnerability. Freedom is only one kind of invulnerability. Others include immunity, invulnerability to a species of harmful microorganisms, invulnerability to harmful weather. One who continues in a vulnerable lifestyle and then complains when he is plundered, is somewhat like a West Indies resident who builds a flimsy house and then blames the next hurricane for demolishing it. Certainly, people are to blame when they inflict coercion, but merely blaming them does not bring liberty. The self-responsible person builds a home which can withstand likely storms and develops a way of life not vulnerable to likely attempts at predation. No one claims that freedom is a summum bonum. Uh, Note the highest good introduced by Cicero. To achieve freedom, one has to forego some opportunities and satisfactions while gaining others. How much freedom? As Lee and Skye mentioned, Freedom is not a monolithic entity. There are various degrees, but not all degrees are necessarily viable. For most people, I suspect that choice is between predominantly servile, vulnerable lifestyles and predominantly liberated, invulnerable lifestyles. If satisfaction could be plotted with respect to freedom for a large number of people, I think the graph would have a low peak of relative satisfaction around 5 to 10 percent freedom, a higher peak around 90 to 95 percent freedom, and a wide depression in between. The lower maximum is exemplified in contemporary society by many a successful middle American. He lives conventionally but takes advantage of some of the easier, more obvious loopholes. He pays income taxes, but hires a tax accountant to maximize deductions. He registers for the draft, but goes to college in hope of being made a technician instead of a target. 
his mental state is one of controlled schizophrenia. He believes most of the statist myths in which he was indoctrinated, yet maintains a modicum of skepticism. He goes to church, or at least accepts their standard of morality, but is not above having a drink at a nude bar. He is largely rational in his work, but keeps his rationality compartmented. He does not, dares not, critically examine his life as a whole. Although self-maintained schizophrenia leads to unhealthy and unhappy complications, on the whole, the opportunistic serf may have it better than his more consistent, more gullible, less self-motivated brother who is drafted and becomes a target, and a paraplegic rotting in a VA hospital, struggling along in a low-paying, high-tax job with a load of installment debts. But the opportunistic serf is probably also more contented than the nonconformist, who tried to be free in some things while remained servile in overall living pattern. One who is half free and half serf dwells in a psychological no-man's land. He knows too much and thinks too independently to play servile status games with conviction and success, yet remains too immersed in and influenced by that culture to achieve success, satisfaction on his own terms. This includes many, not all, bohemians, adventurers, black market entrepreneurs, religious cultural minorities, and radicals of all sorts. A half-and-half -half lifestyle tends to be unstable. Some go on to more complete liberation. Some drift back into, at first, outward conformity, then acceptance of servile norms. Some end in psychosis or early death. The higher maximum of satisfaction is attained by someone with a liberated home-based plus some import-export with the servile society. For him, contact with the state is an occasional annoyance and danger, not a big part of his life. Thus, he can avoid the psychological paralysis that afflicts so many nonconformists. Compared to the opportunistic serf, he may enjoy somewhat fewer conveniences at present, but is happier overall. On the other hand, he has more than someone living in the primitive isolation presently required for 100% freedom. Liberty or servitude or neurosis. Whether one will be happier as a free man or as a slave partly depends on the individual. But this choice is not open to most libertarians. Relative contentment in servitude is possible only for those who believe in it. Most libertarians are too independent and well-informed. For libertarians, the choice is between freedom and neurosis. What become of those libertarians of five years ago who gave up or never tried achieving personal liberty? Of people I knew, one is now a Catholic, another is a Mormon, another committed himself to a mental hospital. Many are occupied with chronic ailments. Freedom for what? That is up to you, as Lee and Skye suggested. But in the immediate future, I think most liberationists will include freedom to pioneer in freedom, i.e., freedom to make a career of liberation. At present, there are no ways of self-liberation which are both easy and highly effective. Opt-out will become easier as more do it and develop techniques, but right now, effective liberation requires so much of one's time and resources that one who does it will probably make it his main career, eventually developing services for sale. Liberation is a many splendored thing. There are various ways to do it and a variety of physical and mental activities involved. Liberation draws on a wide range of skills, 
and offers many satisfactions. To some, opting out evokes images of gathering berries in a far-off wilderness. Liberation does seem to be easier in uninhabited areas, at least as a do-it-yourself thing, which it necessarily is for the first pioneers. But it is also possible in large cities. Imagine, for example, an old expensive building, which appears to be only a private club, but which conceals an entranceway to apartments and workshops tunneled underneath. Freedom does indeed need more full-time professionals, not collective movement preachers seeking a coterie of followers, but explorers, inventors, developers of liberated lifeways. From Libertarian Connection number 15, November 17th, 1970. And welcome to the Vani Podcast. I'm Shane and... I'm Kyle. That was a little drawn out. <laughs> Anyways, we're certainly glad you decided to uh, join us today. The Vani Podcast is covered by a Bipcot No Government License. Reuse and modification is permitted to anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can learn more at bipcot.org. This episode is entitled Controlled Schizophrenia, Freedom or Neurosis. And the show notes can be found at vonipodcast.com forward slash six. While you're there, please consider perusing all of the content already available. There's articles, an FAQ, articles about Vonu, and much, much more. Again, that's vonipodcast.com, and Vonu is spelled V as in victory, O, and is in Nancy U, vonipodcast.com. Before we dive into tonight's broadcast, I'd like to thank Travis for his hardware contribution. In a short week or so, Kyle will have his first ever external podcasting microphone. So for those of you who, who are kind of new to Kyle, thanks to the, the Vani podcast, Kyle, you've been a podcaster uh, and videographer for what, like five years now? Oh, gee, man. Let's see. I think it goes longer than that. I, it, we're, we're going years and years back, like when Obama first got into office. If you go back to my oldest podcast, just on other series. Yeah, so 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 you so you started podcasting then, and you've had the same the same Mac, mm -hmm. the same yeah. Mac pre Obama, and you've been yes. using the internal microphone the entire time. My yes, my MacBook is now officially older than the entire Obama administration, just to give people an idea of the scale of time. And it serves me well, you know, good and faithful servant and all of that. But I mean, come on, people, it's it's 2017, you know. <laughs> yeah, so so hundreds of podcasts done with that internal microphone and. That's going to be uh that's that's not going to happen anymore, you know. Once uh, once that comes in, uh, but, uh, but yeah, thanks so much, Travis, for your contribution. I know Kyle, pre Kyle, you definitely appreciate. It. I mean, you you actually get, you're gonna have a microphone to speak into. I, I guess <laughs> I get I get to be a grown up podcaster now. <laughs> very good, very good. But uh, again, Travis, thanks so much for your contribution. It's definitely going to uh, uh, you know help out the uh, quality of the audio uh, that you'll hear in this podcast. I'm going to pick up the same one uh, that uh, Mike or that uh, that Kyle picked up. It's uh, uh, I know the I know Michael Dean from the Fre Freedom Fiends uh, recommends like an Audio Technica ATR 2100, and this one is like an identical one to that, only it costs half as much, and it comes with uh, you know the, uh, the the power hookup, whether XLR or otherwise, uh, and also you know a stand. So. It's a good deal. It's a good microphone, and uh, I think uh, we're both going to, uh, you know, do a little, do a little upgrading. But, uh, anyways, very good. Let's get into it. Uh, so, Kyle, you, you, I think from now on, I'm just going to kind of refer to you as like the definition man, just, just because. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, why don't you go ahead and, and define controlled schizophrenia for us? Well, controlled schizophrenia would be the mental state of a citizen serf that practices double think. And one way that they really kind of do this is that they act in their own best interests, even though they still sort of believe in the official mainstream narratives and values of the servile society. Indeed, indeed. So I, I guess let's just name you know name some examples here, and this will get more concrete as we as we move forward. But I guess some some examples would be uh, you know Donald Trump supporters who voted for Ron Paul. I mean uh, uh, Ron Paul, I I don't, I don't like him for a lot of reasons. Uh, he's a political crusader, but uh, but nonetheless, I mean uh, going from Ron Paul to Donald Trump is Donald Trump is is a major major leap. Uh, it's not even a leap. I I don't know what what the uh, what the right uh, word for that is, but uh, I guess that's off onto another planet. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. I mean, how do you go from pro-free market, anti-war, anti-police state to pro-mercantilism, pro-war, and pro-police state in four short years? I mean, in yeah. what reality, in what element of the multiverse does that actually happen in? Well, apparently it happened here. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think uh, we'll we'll begin to kind of understand why why that's why that's occurring. But uh, I guess some some other examples: Christopher Cantwell, Walter Block, and Stefan Molyneux. Uh, now I listen. I used to I guess Cantwell and uh, Stefan Molyneux. I used I used to listen to them. Uh, Cantwell when he was you know his anti SJW thing, which has kind of evolved into you know the throwing leftists out of helicopters uh, and you know the advocacy for Trump, obviously. Walter Block. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. He's done a lot of great work on economics. You know, uh, writing about uh, you know privatizing everything. But uh, then to, you know, go on and endorse Donald Trump, uh, who's a mercantilist, who he's very keen on, you know, on economics. So I, he knows the dangers of that. So uh, I, I don't really know what's going on there. And then Molyneux, uh, gosh, there were some fantastic videos he did back in back in the day. There's some fantastic videos, ones that are still shared. And it's like, oh, this is this is uh, the old Molyneux. Like there, there has to be that distinction now. And uh, that's that's due in, in large part to the the uh, to, to control schizophrenia. Yep, old Molyneux versus new Molyneux. The new Molyneux who is humping the Trump is not the Molyneux who made classics like the story of your enslavement and many, many others. And that's exactly what we're talking about tonight, the controlled schizophrenia, people basically betraying their principles and essentially becoming hypocrites. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I guess to, to, I guess we'll just kind of name some, some, a few more examples. We're going to name names here as we've already done, but uh, Adam Kokesh. Uh, definitely. Uh, <laughs> don't you I don't. No I do. Yes. Yeah. He, he didn't show up to the, the other pod. He, I, I was gonna interview him once uh, last May, and uh, actually it was May of 2015. No, eh, well, May of 2015 actually. God, so it's kind of hard to keep this stuff straight now. But uh, yeah, May of 2015. I was I was gonna interview him, and he never showed up. So, uh, uh, but yeah, Adam Kokesh. Uh, you you go from like this, this hardcore volunteerist writing, you know, a, 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 a subpar book called Freedom. And then, uh, and then, and then, announce uh, you're running for presidency in 2020. Uh, you know, uh, uh, that's and asking yep. for five million dollars on top of that. So, like, that's uh, I don't know. No, don't and know. and look, j just about his book. Like, I wrote a book report on that on my blog, and it's so bad that when I eventually read, you know, Derek Brose's and John Vibes's book on the Conscious Resistance: Reflections on Anarchy and Spirituality, I said this Conscious Resistance book, which has its own problems, is so much better. And I'm not, I'm not very spiritual at all, but those guys are way better than Kokesh. Like it's not even in the same. <laughs> yeah, and they're and they're running for office in 2020 either. So that's right. that's definitely good. And then, uh, uh, yeah, a couple other folks, Jeff Wood and James Weeks, both folks I've met at the uh, the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest. I uh, hung out with them quite a bit uh, this past, uh, you know, August or I think it was August. August, I think it was, yeah. But I uh, hung out with them quite a bit. And yeah, they're, 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 they're good folks. I mean, whenever they're uh, not talking about political crusading and, you know, like the local elections, I mean, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good conversation. But uh, I don't know. My eyes kind of glaze over and I start to think about other things whenever talking about, uh, you know, getting people to vote for them and shit at an anarchist freedom festival. So that's, I don't know, that's a little bit of a disconnect there, don't you think, Kyle? Uh, yeah, anarchist politicians are political crusaders. Uh, yeah, I mean, and also that not only that, think about that too, folks. The oxymoronic anarchist politicians, like the oxymoronic sovereign citizens and other oxymoronic, you know, really contradictory things. And so that's kind of what we're kind of getting at tonight with with pointing out controlled schizophrenia are people who contradict themselves really blatantly. Indeed, indeed. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and mention this one, too, because uh, I guess they did kind of get a little bit of a mention uh, in, in Bonnie's uh, The Search for Personal Freedom, but uh, limited government constitutionalists. And this has probably been, I, I don't know, other than, you know, the anarcho-capitalist supporting Trump, this has been kind of, you know, kind of the most disappointing. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't even know how I can say that. But, you know, I, I, I've had some colleagues that, that, have, that have been constitutionalists and, you know, uh, commit commits of safety or direct action, our form of direct action. And, uh, you know, it's just a difference in ideology. And, you know, we can get along uh, where, we, where we used to be able to at least. But uh, now, now that Trump is the one, uh, you know, issuing these executive orders, they're constitutional and they're just they're just fine. But uh, when Bush and Obama were doing them, uh uh, no no no, they're unconstitutional. But now, since it's their guy doing it, since it's uh, since it's you know stuff that they seem uh, stuff that they see viable, it's just okay. And it's not you know it's no no uh, no reason to uh, you know stick to principles, stick to you know the the ideology. Well, screw 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 that screw that why <laughs> screw that. 
I keep getting told, Shane, by various political crusaders that the people selected, you know, his wannabe majesty, the shiny rug. And then I tell them, wait a minute, you know that the Electoral College selects the president as per the Constitution, right? You know that, right? I mean, you well, that's that's that. that's their document. They should. But they don't. Yeah, like, OK, this is kind of sad. If I'm more knowledgeable about constitutional law than the American Patriot Movement is, at least collectively or at least portions thereof, that's kind of a problem. Yeah, just a wee bit. Just... A wee bit. But no, no, they're going to make <laughs> America great again. You know what? I've got a better slogan. Let's make America free again. How about that? Let's make America free again. Hell, that's a slogan I might even consider getting behind. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, so like I said, let's, let's make this more concrete and take a look at what Rayo had to say. Quote, as Lee and Sky mentioned, freedom is not a monolithic entity. There are various degrees, but not all degrees are necessarily viable. For most people, I suspect, that choice is between... Is is between predominantly servile, vulnerable lifestyles and predominantly liberated and vulnerable lifestyles. If satisfaction could be plotted with respect to freedom for a large number of people, I think that graph would have a low peak of relative satisfaction around 5% to 10% freedom, a higher peak around 90% to 95% freedom, and a wide depression in between. The lower maximum is exemplified in contemporary society by, by many a successful middle American. He lives conventionally, but takes advantage of some of the easier, more obvious loopholes. He pays income taxes, but hires a tax account to maximize deductions. He registers for the draft, but goes to college in hope of being made a technician instead of a target. His mental state is one of controlled schizophrenia. He believes most of the status myths in which he was indoctrinated, yet maintains a modicum of skepticism. He goes to church, or at least accepts their standard, standard morality, but is not above having a drink at a nude bar. He is largely rational in his work, but keeps his, his rationality compartmented. He does not, dares not, critically examine his life as a whole, end quote. And that's page 18 uh, to 19. So, I mean, that's probably a better example of, you know, controlled schizophrenia than, I, than you or I could have provided. Uh, and, you know, just the way that he explains it, I, I really love that quote. That's something I posted even before, you know, the, the Monty podcast. It's just so good because it describes so many people. It really does, and it kind of gives you the baseline uh, for folks that may be controlled, schizo schizo controlled schizophrenics. But also, I mean, you, you can also apply that to the folks that, uh, that we're kind of naming above, uh, uh, in, in some manner of speaking, at least. Well, they want to have their cake and eat it, too, don't they? You know, they want to be the brave freedom fighters, but they also want to work with inside the system. They want to, uh, you know, uh, change things for the better, hoping change and, you know, hoping for the change and changing for the hope, right? You know, all these interchangeable, really consumerist slogans, which I think is a little bit more of a deeper concept. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they want they want to have everything work in their favor, but not actually struggle or do any real work to get it. Look at me, I'm a YouTube celebrity because I point a webcam at my face and say things. And act as if that's going to change the world when, in fact, real real life doesn't work like that. And so that that yes. that too that too. And sorry that too. But I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, you consider uh, I mean some folks that that I know that are agorists, but they're still political crusaders. So you know, uh, agorists. So you know, breaking the open like they have to break the law. And then you look at uh, you know all of the legal documents that like when you're trying when you're filing for a, a position, whether locally or federally, there's a lot of personal ident identifiable information that needs to be you know given out. And uh, you're certainly making yourself far more vulnerable to coercion. You're just handing it over. So uh, see that too. And this is a topic for another time. But just the the blatant lack of security culture. Yeah. Um, so so there, there is there is that too. But uh, let me uh, read this uh, this next quote. So, quote, although self-maintained schizophrenia leads to unhealthy and un unhappy complications, on the whole, the opportunistic surf may have it better than his more consistent, more gullible, less, less self-motivated brother who is drafted and becomes a target, and a paraplegic rotting in a VA hospital, struggling along in a low-paying, high-tax job with a load of installment debts, end quote. Now, Kyle, that's something that I've, 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 I've often said about, you know, most individuals in the state of survival society. I mean, Ray was mentioning, uh, you know, 
the the self maintained schizophrenia I mean, is unhealthy and it's unhappy. I mean, even if even if you don't want to consciously, or even if some the, some individuals don't want to consciously, you know, examine all of their life and realize that the uh, you know some aspects are very very contradictory uh, with, with with others. Uh, I mean, I, something I've said, and you know, I I think. Well, I don't think I know that. Well, freedom freedom requires personal responsibility, right? And th it's that's just way too much to handle for a lot of folks. You know, being a slave is just so much easier. Rather than you know taking taking you know control of of, of all of the spheres of their life and uh, you know putting pushing all those in a direction towards you know personal freedom or uh, vanuism, uh I don't know. I don't know. Being a slave is just so much easier. It really is. And you know w w when you uh, when when you advocate for freedom and you say you know agorism is great when you say. Uh, uh, when you say like, oh, I'm an anarcho-capitalist, uh, you know, I'm doing something. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You, you, you kind of have that facade of, of being like a freedom seeker, but uh, the rest of your life, uh, the rest of your life kind of shows otherwise. Well, yeah, a lot of people just want to go along to get along. So, I mean, even with things like uh, when people make a lot of claims that we live in a capitalist economy, but of course, there's a, this, you know, really nasty, you know, socialist bureaucracy and such. Or we have secured private property rights, but then we have to, we're forced to pay taxes for all of these, you know, public utilities of the roads and uh, the various different electrical grids and, you know, whatever the hell. And I mean, oh, public lands, there's that too, which the patriots are really big about because they're socialists, uh, if actually anybody was being intellectually honest. So yeah, I mean, it's like, we want freedom and we're waving the flag and we want to restore constitutional government, but we want our public lands. I'm sorry, did nobody yeah. see a problem with that? Because that's what the Citizens for Constitutional Freedom C4CF guys were doing up at, up at the refuge we're squatting at, was, was, was that, well, actually, it's even worse than that, right? Because the original reason was, not to get too deeply into this example, but the original reason is we want to release the Hammond political prisoners uh, we want them released, and then it was, well, now we're going to go squat at the birdcage because now we're shifting the focus onto this completely other different goal that has nothing to do with the Hammonds, or, or at least a very tenuous connection to the Hammonds, and instead is now about public lands. Oh, there's a bait and switch, but don't get, don't get upset at us. I mean, hell, we're just doing an Occupy Wall Street thing, right? I mean, remember we'll Occupy Wall Street? Their whole thing mm -hmm. was, we're, we're going to sit, we're going to squat at a park and demand Congress do something about wall street because the bailouts which is was the same thing that the tea partiers were upset about back in back in 2009 and 2010. yeah oh 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 we're not socialists we're totally not socialists even though we have our little drum circles and we dance around in a in a circle and then of course years later the guys at the refuge were hauling their guns around and praying which a lot of people don't really know about even though there's footage of that so there's all these contradictions and hypocrisy which is simply what i'm pointing out here yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely controlled schizophrenia to sit to put it uh, to put it uh, briefly. But uh, let's. Uh, I'm going to read this. Uh, uh, we've got a couple more quotes here. Quote, uh, but the opportunistic serf is probably also more contented than the nonconformist who tried to be free in some things while remain servile in overall li in overall living pattern. One who is half free and half serf dwells in a psychological no man's land. He knows too much and thinks too independently to play servile status games with conviction and success, yet remains too immersed in and, and influenced by that culture to achieve success, satisfaction on his own terms. This includes many, not all, bohemians, adventurers, black market entrepreneurs, religious cultural minorities, and radicals of all sorts. A half-and-half -half lifestyle tends to be unstable. Some go on to more complete liberation, some drift back into, at first, outward conformity, then acceptance of servile norms. Some end in psychosis or early death, end quote. Now, th this kind of reminds me of, you know, the anarcho-capitalists before Trump. Uh, some were focused on, you know, direct action related, on direct action -related solutions and never, never really went far with it. I mean, some people, you know, advocate for, advocated for Bitcoin and, you know, a decentralized economy and, uh, and, and you know, some other things. Some, some folks, you know, RV live, like RV living and, and, and things like that. But, uh, uh, but you know, when uh, Trump came around, they completely abandoned their principles and rejoined the state of survival society. You know, advocating for, tr like, obviously the advocation for Trump and then also, you know, uh, uh, posting articles, <coughs> Republican Hangout, uh, every time Trump does something praising him. Uh, and how how great he is, and this choice was fantastic. This executive order, you know, this uh, this dictatorial uh, uh, this dictatorial motion uh, was just so great. 
So uh, the abandoning of principles and then just the rejoining of the uh, the servile society, even though, uh, you know, uh, uh, on the on the outward, they do call themselves anarcho capitalists. But uh, the actions, the actions uh, speak louder than words. Right, Kyle? Well, yeah. I mean, look at the anarcho transhumanists, right, uh, that we covered on that earlier episode. Um, yeah, it's just like, yeah, you can call yourself an anarchist. You can call your you can claim that you want to live without rulers. But then when you're speaking out of the other side of your damn mouth that quite frankly, you, know, you want government to fund your little eugenics project or cybernetic stuff, which, oh, by the way, is actually done under the auspices of the uh, military-industrial complex, like Raytheon and Dyncor and Halliburton and all those people, uh, that cartel, if you will, which, of course, is very fascist and mercantilist and protectionist and all of that, which is completely anti-free market, then, yeah, um, you know, you folks can call yourselves whatever ideological label you want. You're not that much different from the counterfeit anarchists who actually, according to the latest new, uh, stuff coming out of the news cycle, Shane, some of the counterfeit anarchists in Portland, Oregon, have actually been blocking traffic and not all, and depriving people of their freedom of movement to just, like, just get around. So, hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of like, I mean, whether it's actions like that or it's more verbal, like, I, I'm an anarchist and I like Trump, which was Chris Cantwell's thing now that he's doing, now that he's apparently abandoned all his principles. Well, an, anar Anarcho-Trumpism, God. No, what it really is is white genocide, the lie of white genocide, which itself is contradictory because if anybody ever bothered to look at any set of statistics, even if you were to ironically look at the U.S. Census Bureau statistics, uh, just in terms of demographics, which, yes, would take on a racial or ethnic uh, angle of it, too. Like, the so-called Caucasian people are not dying out. They are still a healthy minor uh, excuse me, majority, I'm sorry. The so-called white people are definitely going to be a healthy majority on this portion of the North American continent for quite some time to come, even according to the federal government's own statisticians at the Census Bureau. So the lie of white genocide, the lie of the Islamic invasion or the Sharia law takeover or whatever label it's going by this week, it's all being fed to us by the neoconservatives mainly. And I find it rather interesting, Shane, that a lot of people who claimed to be part of a liberty movement to be part of whatever label you want to give it, the patriot movement, this movement, that movement, the truth movement, not all of them to be certain, but many of them uh, within, who are usually content producers in the alternative media, there's been a real schism. Even Derek Bros chronicled this during the election cycle last year mm -hmm. uh, where, where this is occurring. So yeah, the controlled schizophrenia is alive and well, and I've lost people because of this crap. Literally, um, the ostracism has been uh, has been quite educational for one reason or another. So, folks, please keep in mind this isn't just something that Rayo noticed, like in his time period in the '60s. This is a reality I am living now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it definitely is. It definitely is, and you, and, you, and uh, as we we kind of as I've kind of mentioned about the anarcho capitalists too. I mean, uh, uh, governments, uh, the, 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 the state, the, their greatest tools, you know, like divide, like dividing and conquering, the divide and conquer, just to, like just just simply put. And and you you understand, uh, you, like you you look at all of the all of the you know separations happening within uh, whatever, like whether it's intercapitalist, whether it's constitutionalist, whatever. Uh, and, and we're like with with folks like my, myself and you, Kyle, which I mean, we're like uh, you're you're Vanu and I'm an, I'm an, I'm an anarchist. And I said, what? I'm not like advocating for a, a political ruler is a contradiction. That's not something that I'm going to do. It's not something, something I'm ever going to do. And, uh, uh, and then I get labeled a, labeled a purist, and they say, well, you know, pragmatically, this is the best route. No, it's, uh, not. And no, it, no, no, it's, it's action, no. Direct action is it, it more broadly, even, even more so than uh, broader than Vanu. Direct action is what's practical. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but like it, it's it's so the controlled schizophrenia is uh, I mean, yeah, it's causing a lot. Of, it's causing a lot of problems and it's not just something. Uh, and yeah, and, and this uh, and we're kind of reading from Rayo tonight. This was before the formation of the Libertarian Party. Yeah. So uh, so this isn't so what he was witnessing then. And this was more broadly, you know, I, I would say like, uh, you know, um, just collective movementism or just individuals that he knew personally that uh, he, he, he kind of, you know, had he kind of uh, associated with them. And then they just kind of, you know, returned to the servile society. And once he mentioned that, once it one ended up in a psych ward. Uh, but, uh, 
Yeah, th- like this is something happened. Like he noticed this then. He wrote about it, and then you know I- I've gone back and read read uh, the, the article uh, that that we played in the beginning of this uh, this episode a couple of times, and oh my god, it's it's so accurate. It's so accurate. Yeah. Well, and and not only that, but if you look at the so-called alt right, okay, I mean I mean like who are these people? Literally. I mean, the best that I can figure is that they're essentially uh, the cheerleading squad for El Presidente, the tyrant-in-chief, aren't they? So anybody who's part of this alt-right, anybody who abandoned their principles and joined the alt-right, uh, it essentially is just, uh, I mean, I mean, they're, they're freaky, man. And actually, you know what, if anybody's actually going to be worse than, uh, you know, the current despot in the White House, it's probably going to be the alt-right because I know people. Or should I, or maybe I should say, I used to know people, uh, uh, pr- uh, some individuals pretty well, as they slid into the alt right, and it's been freaky for me, man. It's not been very a very comfortable experience. There's very much been a bifurcation in the alternative media, a schism that even Derek Bros noticed, like I mentioned a moment ago, where I mean, th- this is happening. This is real. And Rayo, and, and, the, and the, what, what's, what's rather remarkable about Rayo's observation in his time period was he was noticing something similar. So, and, I, and, I th- and, I th- and I think I would be right in saying that. I mean, obviously, like, uh, you know, with, pro- with progressivism, things get, uh, or regressive- regressivism, actually, things get progressively worse. Uh, so so y- you kind of uh, uh, look at uh, uh, even, even the law, even, you know, the amount of laws and things. And, it, and, and uh, uh, I mean, the Libertarian Party wasn't formed, so that wasn't, you know, a part of it. Uh, things were, weren't as bad then, but he noticed it back in his day. I'm sure, like, especially like, when, you, when you read his book and you read uh, some, of, uh, some of his articles that are up on the Vani website, you can kind of understand like why this sort of shit frustrated him and why I mean why it frustrates Kyle and I too and and, and probably if you're listening to this podcast it's probably annoying as hell for you too. So uh, I I mean it's, it's it's definitely not something new and uh and I guess the, the point here is that things weren't even as bad as they are now. They pr- it probably wasn't, you know, that obvious uh back when he was writing those articles because hell it's still not obvious to a lot of folks today. I mean a lot of people don't even know. I uh, I mean a lot of folks probably don't even realize that you know that they kind of slid back into like the survival society. It probably is something just like one day ch- the light flicked and and there they are advocating for Trump or something. I don't know. Well they slid back and then they became political crusaders. They became as the political science term is reformism. They became reformists and all that where they want to work inside of the system in order in order to change it from within. And as you well know and I'll say it's for the benefit of the audience you know, my entire first book, which you can read for free or listen to the audiobook Shane and I made a while back, but, you know, An Elusive Phantom of Hope, A Critique of Reformism, I go through literally like every single type of major or any uh, technique that's used by political crusaders, and I basically explain very going line by line pretty much why they are very impractical. So it kind of begs the question, why do you have all these people who claim that they're anti-establishment or even anti-statist? Or, or, or even anarchists, and then claiming, uh, you know, throughout the Bush years and even the Obama years, and then all of a sudden because of this reality TV star, I mean, come on, this is your, uh, this is this is the um, uh, Mussolini equivalent. I, I mean, at least at least Mussolini had some chutzpah. I mean, this this, <laughs> joker, this joker doesn't even inspire even like begrudging respect. He's worthy of contempt and scorn. That's why I think over these next several years, I'm going to get even more creative with my insults, just like I did with Bush, just like I did with Obama. And I think that's a healthy <laughs> attitude. Maybe, maybe some of you in the audience may want to think of your own insults. Because, I mean, think about even the term, the president of the United States of America. Sounds like you're referring to God Almighty. Seriously. So no, don't don't have any shred of respect. And oh, by the way, this isn't about the presidency specifically. Any of these jokers, congressmen, senators, legislators of all kinds, judges, federal agents, uh, the the Leos, the bludgies, which Rayo called them. We need to have our own words. People call, you know, people call like the, the blue coats, you know, cops and so forth. But I think we need more words and more terms to really have a really truly American scorn for government. Because, <laughs> because seriously, if individuals on this portion of the North American continent are going to like exercise their freedom in any way, I think our language has to show it at some point. And thankfully, people are fed up with government police. 
which I think is a starting point, but I don't think it should end there. I think we need to kind of build on that. And so, yeah, I mean, th I mean, these people do not respect your, your do not, um, these people do not earn your respect uh, of yourself or anyone else. They have not earned your respect. And that's something else interesting too. Government expects trust, but earns suspicion. Whereas the Agora, the free market, if you will, uh, earns trust and um, expects suspicion, especially from people you don't know, which is why security culture is important. But yeah, regarding controlled schizophrenia, man, this is what happens when you have a betrayal of principle of any kind. Even if your principles may not be 100% rational and you know who you are or you know who you depending on your ideology, so what, what values you claim to hold, <laughs> public lands, um, at, least, at least be internally consistent, right? At least try to be, make the effort. But unfortunately, people, there are certain individuals not making the effort, aren't they, Shane? Yeah, yeah. And that's why I, I really despise, like, you know, uh, uh, some folks that I, I know personally, and then also just, I guess, more widely, the scorn for philosophy. Like, well, that's just worthless. I mean, that's not something, that's not anything practical. Well, I've heard uh, philosophizing. Now, you, sh you kids shouldn't be philosophizing. We need to be practical. Okay, let's go worship Trump. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I really do think, and this, I mean, this is the first, like, I, I, this is season one of this series, which, yeah, we're going to do seasons now, by the way, um, just to keep them separate, but, uh, it, it, like, this is season one, we're laying the philosophical groundwork and, you know, kind of explaining what, how, what Rayo kind of thought about these things, and, uh, you know, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll kind of, uh, you know, expand upon that some, some later on, but uh, you, you, you've got to have a, 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 a firm philosophical foundation. I mean, it, it, it's it's a requirement. I mean, it, it really is a requirement or else uh, any, any you know, aspiring ruler, I mean, uh, the, some of the libertarians I know abandoned, you know, whatever whatever endeavors they were going down to go, uh, you know, vote for Bernie Sanders. Then you have Donald Trump. I mean, uh, wh wh whoever, whoever the aspiring political ruler is, uh, you know, whatever political crusading it, it is, I mean... <laughs> if you have, if you have firm philosophical principles to start with, uh, you're you're going to see right through this. So you're going to see right through right, this of shit. Of course, and the and the other reason for some degree of philosophizing and so forth that it doesn't necessarily have to be like Rayo's concept as we've been covering over in these past couple of uh, podcasts and so forth to kind of kick off this series. It's also like when pressure is brought to bear and you're being tyrannized, whether directly or indirectly. You have like a moral backbone. You have a spine, which a lot of people just don't have because you apply you know, any, any like, let's say any government agent applies the slightest amount of pressure and people squeal and, oh, you don't have a search warrant, but you're acting all tough. Oh, yes, please come into my home and like, like, like flip open the door for the drug raid or whatever. I mean, even something like a legal inter asking for like a legal interstice, like a search warrant. Most people don't do that kind of stuff because they don't have a backbone. So that's the other reason, yeah. too, for, for some degree of philosophizing and having principles and values and such is so that it's to give you a – it's to kind of something to kind of – I don't want to say fall back on, but it's a motivating factor. So for – so as we'll get into in, in later podcasts, when you're like living in the van full time or you're doing the van nomadism or you're doing other things, if for whatever reason you have like a down day or there's pressure being bought, brought to bear on an, uh, from an external – entity or whatever, you have something to, you kind of fall back on and kind of re-motivate yourself and recharge your batteries that, look, you're doing the right thing or, or reminding yourself why you're doing something. Because a lot of people forget as time goes on. They get so mired and so focused on what they're doing that they miss the forest for the trees. They lose sight of the bigger picture. And so, yes, by laying this foundation and also explaining also, what I think Rayo is doing here, too, is explaining why things are the way they are. You know, the reason for the political crusading, I think, Shane, and feel free to disagree with me if you take, have a different interpretation on this. I think a lot of the reason for the political crusading is because of the controlled schizophrenia. Because people are being hypocritical and inconsistent and, and betraying whatever values they claim to have, Therefore, they're going to always slide back into going to the voting booth and petitioning and protesting and filing lawsuits and and, and, and. I, I I think I think it goes further than that though because freedom, as Rayo demonstrated himself, and as he wrote about, uh, you know, in Bond of the Search for Personal Freedom, freedom it does it requires a lifestyle change. It it really does. You can't. 
you can't, uh, you know, still be living in the state of survival society uh, ingrained in that culture uh, with, with all of the negative things that we, we've already covered so far uh, and still, you know, remain r remain freedom minded and, and, and principled. Uh, I, and a lot of people just don't. They don't have the efforts. I mean, they're, they're in a good job. They're making good money and they're just, you know, going to they're going to conform so they can, they, you know, they can, you know, they can they can make that money, support a family, whatever. I, I, I understand those sorts of things. But at the same time. Those who really, really desire, really, those who really, truly desire freedom, it require it requires a lifestyle change. I mean, look look at all the stuff that Rayo did, all the stuff that he wrote about, and uh, uh, and, and you know, going from uh, uh, as uh, uh, Benjamin Best wrote about uh, wrote uh, in, 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 his, in his article about uh, you know meeting Rayo and going on Vanu uh, on Vanu, on Vanu week. I mean, yeah, Rayo started out, you know, at the Nathaniel Brain Institute and, and other places like that out there in California, where there was, you know, kind of an objectivist libertarian esque culture, and uh, um, and yeah, it, uh, yeah, he he gave all that up and then went and just, you know, v did van nomadism. Uh, I mean, it's 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 really really hard. Uh, I mean, pra pract uh, practically it's hard, uh, but at the same time, when you when you're ingrained in in, in this culture, uh. In this in this status culture, it's it's really really hard to you know go all the way. It's really hard to stay consistent. It's really hard to really you know <laughs> because it's at odd it's at odd with our values, right? And even yes. and even going broader than even just Vanu, let me just mention this just so I'll kind of put things in perspective. Even if you look at, for example, the Freedom Umbrella of Direct Action, which you and I co-authored, or you know that entire Direct Action series that lasted what was it like half a year or more than half a year? Almost seven months. Yeah. Yeah, like seven months. Okay, like most of that stuff, that content. Hell, I was even a guest a couple times, <laughs> but um, you know, most of that content is all lifestyle changes. Everything yes. that you and I discovered, that list of like hundred plus things that just is multiple times just you know at least has a potential for better efficacy and is certainly more numerous than all the methods of political crusading. The majority of that stuff is all lifestyle changes, and that is kind of suggestive of something else, isn't it? What I think it might be suggestive of is that people, when people will talk about politics, they have this very narrow view that it just involves. Uh, you know, the, these uh, uh, Federal Election Commission FEC debates uh, that you see on TV and then, of course, voting on Election Day. And that's not really politics. Politics, and especially power politics or real politics, as the Russians, uh, commies called it, is all about backroom deals and lobbyists and, and writing bills for legislators who don't read the bills that, they're, that the lobbyists wrote and then pass it. And then, like, like all the evil stuff that happens in court, which actually is more important than anything with the legislative branch, and many, many other things that deal with the realities of power being exercised instead of what some, you know, egghead intelligentsia wrote in a textbook this semester. Okay, so that 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 that's just kind of it. I mean, there's a when it came, comes to the game of politics, there's a lot more going on, and people should also ask themselves this question, especially people who really kind of look at the news cycle particularly, is there more to politics than pure spectacle? I don't know about you, man, but, you know, I look at uh, the Trumpster. Uh, I'm seeing quite a bit of a spectacle. I don't it's, know about you. It's, it's, it's all spectacle. It's all clickbait headlines. It's all uh, pretty, much, I mean, pretty much from both sides uh, for, uh, within this, uh, this uh, left-right paradigm. It's pretty much all spectacle. It's all spectacle. I don't see any like anything anything really of substance. Uh, obviously, I mean, I, I just I just really don't. Yeah, it, it's all spectacle. But uh, let me get to this last quote. And I think we'll have, uh, have even more to discuss. Quote: The higher maximum of satisfaction is attained by someone with a liberated home base, plus some import export with the surveillance society. For him, contact with the state is an occasional annoyance and danger, not a big part of his life. Thus, he can avoid the psychological paralysis that afflicts so many nonconformists. Compared to the opportunistic serf, he may enjoy somewhat fewer conveniences at present, but is happier overall. On the other hand, he has more than someone living in the primitive isolation presently required for 100% freedom. End quote. So what Ray is, and, and we'll we'll do it. We'll do a. Uh, uh, we'll definitely spend some time on import export here in, in the next uh, in the next uh, month or so. But 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 what he's saying is, 
uh, like I was saying with the, you know the the ingrained like being ingrained in the culture. Whenever uh, uh, I mean someone's going to college, someone's you know uh, someone's you know going to a job where they've seen it, seeing it on on in the break room. This this really statist atmosphere that it's, it just seems impossible to escape. Uh, this it definitely could, could lead to some psychological paralysis. But Vonnie on the other hand, with with import export. Uh, I mean, they they, they kind of get their supplies. They they do they do their trading like you know once a month or however infrequently that you can. And when you go there, uh, back to the state of society, it, every I would I would assume everything is just so foreign, and it, it's just an, it's just an annoyance. I feel like it's uh, for for me it would be like uh, it would have been much like like you know doing all this uh, doing all these this podcasting and stuff, and then going to uh, going to college and being surrounded by that atmosphere. It's it's an it's 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 an annoyance, and it's extremely, extremely frustrating. It can have an impact on uh, on, on your on your psychological state. I I can, I can uh, say that firsthand. But uh, uh, but yeah, staying out of the state of society as much as possible, and just doing so with import export, I think leads to far better outcomes than just being stuck, than just than just being stuck. And 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 as with controlled schizophrenia, I think uh, we're we're definitely seeing the effects of that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And sorry, something you said sparked something else I, I want to mention too, because this particular episode of ours is really kind of focusing on the importance of integrity, because when you don't have integrity, you become a hypocrite, or as Rayo called it, a controlled schizophrenic. Admittedly, as a blogger, there are times when, when I'm dealing with open source intelligence, at some point I have to deal with the news cycle. And in my first book, An Elusive Phantom of Hope, I basically kind of posited the question about should you avoid the news cycle? The reason I'm bringing up here is this. Even if you don't vote and you don't petition and you're not really a political crusader, but you might still debate with people, not like a proper moderated debate with rules like, like we've done before, right, Shane? Yeah. Um, but like, but like, uh, bickering with people on fascist book or the idiot tube uh, comment section uh, of of one kind or another that happens quite a bit. So uh, bickering with people and trying to persuade them that your perspective is the right one, which it very well may be, but doesn't really matter if it is or not. Right? The point is the time and effort, the opportunity costs that are involved with that kind of thing. And same thing with the news cycle. I mean. Um, you know, just just for the purpose of full disclosure, I mean, when I was much, much younger, I used to be a news junkie. Like, I didn't really believe in the system anyway, but I wanted to know what was going on so I could learn how to protect myself from it was how I kind of rationalized it to myself. So even back then, I guess you could say I was I was thinking in terms of invulnerability to coercion, but I wasn't quite... I didn't know about Rayo, and I wasn't quite thinking of it like that explicitly. But I was thinking about, well, if I know what's going on in the news... I can somehow hide or protect myself in inexplicably some way. So it's a little bit faith-based, a little too much, kind of kind of irrational. Because I would notice that it was a time sink. And I would read and read and read. I would read Bloomberg and the New York Times and the Washington Post and the Washington Times and the New York Post. And on and on and the and the different news wires like Reuters and AP and so on and on and on and on and on. And that was back then. Never mind now, where there's so many more options and so forth. And what I kind of learned is that Rolf Dobelli was right. You know, if you are going to even expose yourself to that, even if you are dealing like I do with open source intelligence, you need to have filters. And the reason I say all of that is to say this. If you find yourself so immersed in the news cycle where, we don't, where you don't have any filters of any kind, you start becoming, and I hate to say this, Sham, but I got to say this for purposes of integrity, considering this episode is all about that. I start acting like a controlled schizophrenic on occasion, so I've noticed it with me. So I'm not some saint, ladies and gentlemen. I know my weak spots, and I'm saying it here for purposes of full disclosure. My weak spot is the news cycle. Always has been, always will be. But I think it's important that, like I said in my first book, to at least point it out. Like, again, the, even the article title was, Should You Avoid the News Cycle? And for a lot of people, I think they should. For me, the most part, I deal with it only once in a blue moon when I do a couple, um, a couple of reports of one kind or another with, a, with another uh, colleague of mine and so forth. But other than that, mm -hmm. like, I don't touch it. And even before I started working it's, 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 it's like a bad drug, right? <laughs> It's like it's, it's like it's like being addicted to some drug in the past, and like you just you, if you, every once in a while you you go back to it. <laughs> right, and 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 you know obviously there's at least something resembling a benefit. At least I like to think so in terms of like open source intelligence. But quite frankly, man, there's a reason why 
like other, even other content producers in the alternative media know me for my book reports because I think at least for me and I would suggest for other people that's a lot healthier and I know for me it's largely prevented me from becoming a full-on controlled schizophrenic like what's happened to some people you and I have known. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and well said. Well, that's, I kind of noticed that. I, I, I kind of, I kind of lay out uh, my line of thinking, and then you just uh, say it a lot better, which, uh, which is why I'm not doing this by myself. But uh, I, I guess to, to, to kind of uh, my, my, my little comment here is: so, so, how do you avoid becoming a controlled schizophrenic? Well, if you're Kyle, you avoid the news cycle as much as possible. Um, but, uh, uh, but first off, take freedom to its logical conclusion. And put it in your own hands, not in you know, uh, not in some uh, dictator, you know, thousands of miles away in uh, in, in Washington uh, in the District of Criminals, and then practice Vanu, uh, practice Vanu. I know, like I, I know some pe some people might take that as like, well, you're telling us what to do. Well, no, 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 no. Vanu is just uh, a lot of you are probably already exercising some aspects of Vanu uh, right now. Uh, Kyle, what's the uh, what's the term for uh, uh, trying to become invulnerable to coercion? Uh, it's on the definitions list. Uh, but uh, just just work towards making that uh, you know universal in your life, uh, and uh, once you, once you do that, I mean I, I think you're going to be a lot if you aren't already. I think you'll be a lot like Rayo and just you know kind of uh, just uh, you know reject this reject this uh, uh, pretty quickly uh, if you don't already. So yes, if uh, somebody yes if somebody is uh, veneer, uh today than they were yesterday, where they have comparatively more invulnerability mm -hmm. to coercion, uh, they are veneer. Then yes, uh, that that that's that's kind of the idea here. And by the way, one more no note about the news cycle. Something too, a, a buddy of mine had mentioned to me years ago. You know, if you have filters placed on, and you and by that what I mean is that you have uh, better sources of information. That's like I don't want to say real news, but let's just say uh, more academic, at least in some sense. But you have like other people you trust who are willing to be in the news cycle like full time for whatever reason then they can't tell you everything that they've seen, but they'll only tell you the important stuff. And so that, like, that's one way kind of filters can work so that hopefully the real information at least has a better chance to getting back to you. But then again, not everybody needs to deal with open source intelligence anyway. And then, of course, it also yeah. depends what the subject matter is. I mean, for example, if we're talking about like more off-grid homesteading type stuff, then arguably we don't need to be as careful about being about being worried about getting or at least in my case getting dragged back in uh not necessarily political crusading but at least worrying that's the key thing here worrying about what the political crusaders are going to do that's going to end up hurting me you know this week in the news cycle like i'm look there's so many evils in the world ladies and gentlemen many of you are many years and decades my senior okay i mean i'm not telling you anything you don't already know what i'm simply saying is there's a better way to do things and lifestyle changes really are the best type of way to make yourself invulnerable to coercion indeed indeed i uh yeah i, I definitely agree so i i, I guess that we'll kind of start to wrap this up here and i i'm not sure if, if you've come across this kyle but uh obviously for for the past oh uh uh almost you know almost like a year and a half uh, my focus has been purely solutions and you know direct action more specifically, and I I was I was really surprised by this because uh, so many folks that I, that I know like they say like well you know I, like I'm I'm I, obviously I want freedom obviously I want freedom that's, that's that's kind of a given right, and then you present to them something like uh, some some direct action and you kind of get you kind of like lay out a path that they could they could pursue, which is you know canceling voter registration, going on political field trips. Uh, whatever sh other sh strategic withdrawal they could do, and then you toss them list, or toss them the freedom of rail of direct action, and say, "Go have fun, kid," and uh, and and just to kind of see some of the responses to that, uh, where where the, well, they'll say, "Well, you know, you know, well, I'm gonna vote because uh, you know, I don't want that person to get in." But uh, but this stuff, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's good, but is it really going to like you know bring about more freedom? Uh, I mean, poli politics is what's here today, and I think that's what we need to utilize, uh, and, and you know, at least to to give us more time to find out solutions. Um, so, yeah, so yeah, I've, I've come across a lot of people knocking direct action, and I think that honestly is because of the controlled schizophrenia. They 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 aren't willing to you know take take the fr take the freedom into their own hands and take it to its logical conclusion. I really think that has a lot to do with it. Yes, yes, it is, and notice the reaction. They make all the excuses. So, you know, like. None of those people that you've mentioned, even some of whom I think I know who you're talking about, so I won't say the names to protect the guilty, of course, but I think some of them have actually read my book, at least one or two of them, 
and they're not rebutting anything I've ever said. Or or or, or they or they at least or they at least listen to the listen to the long ass uh, broadcast we did on this subject. Yeah. Right. So the the point is is that they're not being intellectually honest even with themselves. Never mind you or or anybody else. And that that's kind of the problem, right? They're being controlled schizophrenics. And I, I mean, at that point, the only other question really worth asking, as far as I can see, is are they even aware of it or not? And unfortunately, I don't know if there's even a way to answer that question. I don't know how, how you would even begin measuring that. But the point is, is that I think it is objectively observable that when you see people acting like hypocrites and then they go on their political crusades, uh, oh my, uh, why, you know, people have asked me over the years, Shane, why hasn't why isn't America better already? Why haven't our uh, republics been restored yet? This coming from the constitutionalist patriots. Questions like that. And, you know, every single time I've had to tell them, you know what? I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. Well, you know what? All these years later, I have a better answer, a more accurate answer. Maybe not a total and complete answer, but a better one. It's controlled schizophrenia and political crusading. That's why. Rayo was right completely. That's it. Yeah. We're we're going to need people, you know. Uh, I mean, in in Vanu, you know, the ethical enclaves and such. I mean, we're we're going to need people that we can trust that that's uh, you know aren't controlled schizophrenics. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it'd be it'd be it'd be, it'd be wise and, and obviously better for your personal freedom and also your such psychological state to uh, to you know you know not fall prey uh, to, to that uh, to that sort of thing. Uh, it would definitely be uh, definitely be a good thing. I think you'd be a lot happier. Uh, and, and as Rayo kind of mentioned uh, when he was laying out uh, some of the side effects that come from you know uh, you know part freedom and part slave. Uh, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, just getting rid of the control, controlled schizophrenia aspect altogether and focusing on your own personal freedom uh, will lead you down a much, much better path uh, financially, mentally, and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah, and, and, if, and at least for some other people, because it wasn't just me, if you're really affected by the news cycle and the only reason you're thinking about voting or protesting or petitioning or filing lawsuits or grassroots lobbying or pick a method of political crusading, if the only reason you're even halfway considering doing those things seriously is because you're worried about the latest item in the news cycle, then get away from the news. Do it for like a week or a month, hell, even a year if you can manage it, and then see how you feel. And oh, by the way, during that time period, be sure to check out like our other material on either direct action or Vanu specifically so you can do things in your own life while you're away from the news cycle. And then when you do decide to get back to the news cycle, try and evaluate whether your life is better uh, you know, now as, as opposed to before. And I actually, I think that would be a great homework assignment in a sense for people listening, that if you have an affliction uh, with, with fascist book or idiot tube, or some of the other so-called social media sites where you're looking at the content, even if it's not news specifically, but it's making you anxious, take a sabbatical and do some of this other stuff that, that kind of, you know, we've suggested and all that, and then come back to it and then see if your anxiety comes back. And if you are getting a lot of anxiety and all that, then maybe, you know, that's another way of, of probably heading off controlled schizophrenia, Shane, is, mm -hmm. is, is some, getting some mental clarity and perspective. Yeah, yeah, and, and and ensuring that your your thoughts are consistent with your actions, and I and I would say, I mean, uh, I I I do this myself. I, I I have to do this myself, and Kyle, I'm sure you do too. But if I'm wrong, you can you can you know, obviously correct me. But I mean, obviously, I I, I think I I honest, I, I think about a, think about a lot. Like uh, when when I'm when I'm going to do something, I I always consider the ramifications. You know, uh, you know the the ethics, the uh, you know the personal harm that may come to me, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Not to say that I'm like I'm, I'm having like really like I'm, having, I'm thinking about doing bad things, but just you know, tr trying to keep my thoughts consistent with my action, so as to you know try to prevent you know any uh, any potential controlled schizophrenia or also or just you know betraying my principles, because uh, yeah, none of those are are, are good things. Uh, they definitely uh, are, are not good things. No, no, they're not. And so I, I think what's kind of important for people just to keep in mind is that if you act with integrity and you and you say what you <laughs> mean, what you say, say what you mean, right? Uh, don't just talk the talk, walk the walk, and many other adages in the in the English language, English language and such, is that if you just act with integrity, you can pretty much bypass controlled schizophrenia uh, completely, or at least mostly, and I would say by extension political crusading, because I think there's an interesting cause and effect here, right? 
if you were to ask the question, what causes political crusading, I think now I would tell you, I think it's controlled schizophrenia is at the root of it. I really do. No yeah, sane yeah. or rational person would ever be a political crusader for anybody. I honestly believe that now. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would, I would have to agree. But uh, uh, I guess any, any other closing thoughts before, uh, before I wrap this up? I would just say this. One way of vetting people when you're first getting to know them and such is to kind of kind of gently nudge them into conversations where they, they kind of say things to you that kind of reveal their thought processes and such. One thing you'll definitely look out for, say, if you're having coffee with somebody or a beer, or even if you're on a first date, right, <laughs> um, is, is really just to kind of, kind of gently steer the conversation around a certain topic. So it doesn't have to be, you know, quote, political, but just any sort of topics. And really where, where you have some knowledge about, like, like what's actually like true and consistent about it, it could be anything, really. And if they start kind of being shifty or or especially contradictory they start contradicting themselves then then you know there's something else going on and it may not necessarily be controlled schizophrenia but i mean that's what i would kind of suggest in parting thought here is just just talk to people and and if you can do a little bit of socratic questioning maybe not too much because some people are put off by that that i've come across uh whenever i've locally <laughs> here in austin but maybe a little bit of Socratic questioning here, maybe, you know, a little, uh, a little other, other techniques here and there when you're just talking to people can actually reveal uh, whether or not they're hypocritical and therefore controlled schizophrenic. Very good, very good. So I'll leave you with a concluding quote from Rayo. Quote, whether one will be happier as a free man or as a slave partly depends upon the individual, but this choice is not open to most libertarians. Relative contentment and servitude is possible only for those who believe in it. Most libertarians are too independent and well-informed. For libertarians, the choice is between freedom and neurosis. What became of those libertarians of five years ago who gave up, or never tried, achieving personal liberty? Of people I knew, one is now a Catholic, another is a Mormon, another committed himself to a mental hospital. Many are occupied with chronic ailments." End quote. Individuals have free will which means that the choice is up to you. What's it going to be? Freedom or neurosis? Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week.